Hello and uh, welcome to the third rail. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I just received this wonderful Class C locomotive and I thought we should have a first look at it together. So first of all let's have a quick model overview. Uh, the model was special enough to make it to the front page of the 1988 Merklin catalogue. My model is the 3511, which was listed at the bottom of page 5 of the catalogue. The model was also produced in a simple analog version, the 3311, and a digital version, the 3611. The model is made completely out of metal and features directional lighting with three lights at the front and two lights at the rear. This model features a few firsts for Merklin at the time. New casting technologies allowed Merklin to produce their most detailed model to date. The details are striking and we'll have a closer look at them a bit later in the video. Secondly, Merklin drifted away from their standard universal motor and used a Faulhaber type motor in this locomotive. This required a special gearing for the wheels. This uh, type of motors are actually DC motors and uh, will be used more and more in the Merklin production in the years to come. Thirdly, the model features the all-new 5-star propulsion system introduced the same year. This system was introduced to improve the driving characteristics of analog locomotives. The main benefit of the technology, which is based around electronic motor regulation, allows the locomotive to keep a set pace for example, when going uphill or downhill. It also features traction control. You could set the maximum speed using a little potentiometer on the electronic module inside the locomotive. And you could also set the pace of acceleration and deceleration. Now, let's have a quick look at the prototype. The Class C of locomotives was an express train locomotive produced between 1909 and 1921. They were built by the Maschinenfabrik Esslingen and were designed by a legend in the uh, locomotive building world of Germany called Eugen Kittel. This locomotive is obviously of a type Pacific, but its appearance is uh, very unusual for the time. It resembles a bit the Bavarian S26 or S36, but it has smaller wheels to allow it to manage the steeper gradients of the region of Württemberg. This unusual quasi-streamlined appearance earned it the nickname the Schöne Württembergerin, the beautiful Württemberger. Despite its relatively small size, the engine proved extremely powerful and economical. All in all, 41 units were manufactured. Aside from pooling express trains in the kingdom of Württemberg. The locomotive was also used to pull the Orient Express on the Württemberg leg of its journey towards Constantinople. After the First World War, the locomotives were transferred to the Deutsche Reichsbahn. There they were classified as Baureihe 18.1 and remained in service until the end of the war. After the war, they were transferred to the Deutsche Bundesbahn 
and remained in service until 1955. So after this high-level overview, let's have a look at how well or badly I did. So here is the original box of my uh, 3511. All the locomotives with the five-star propulsion system had uh, five red stars next to the model number. So the box is correct. We're going to take it out of its outer sleeve. The plastic inlay and the tray are there, which is good. It's a bit yellowed. That means the locomotive has been stored in a rather hot room. All the paperwork is there, the spare parts list, user manual, perfect. So let's get the uh, sleeve out of the way and have a look at the model. So the tray is intact, which is good. And we'll take it out of its packaging. I can see under the tray that's the original locomotive driver figures and the uh, stoker are there and still in their original packaging. Bonus! As well as a few details. Excellent! So I'm going to put the locomotive on its presentation rail and we'll have a closer look. And here is the model in all its beauty. It looks very good indeed. Let's have a closer look. As you can see on the bodywork of the locomotive are plenty of cast details. You can see every rivet. It's a very, very fine work. Everything is where it should be. There's no brakes and no paint defects. Let's look at it from a uh, front angle. You can see every single detail on the uh, running boards. The front is uh, immaculate. There's nothing broken. Great. Same story on the other side. Let's have a quick overview. Yeah, that's fine. If we look at it again from the other side, you can see the uh, amount of details that have been added to this model. I'm particularly amazed at the amount of and the quality of the uh, reproduction of the rivets on the uh, tender. Does that make me a rivet counter? I doubt it. I'm not one of those. I won't go as far as count them. Anyway, back of the tender, the lights are there, all the details, look how fine it is and the beautiful coal load this locomotive has. Let's have a look at the uh, top of the locomotive. Same story here, extremely detailed. Look at the top of the cab. Every single of this little rivet is cast. Amazing. Uh, there's much better that's been done since, but uh, it doesn't cease to amaze me. I, you'll have guessed it, I, I quite like this model. It actually took me quite a long time to uh, finally get my hands on one of those. Lots of frustration on the way. Let's just hope it works, but uh, we'll find out in another video. Uh, let's have a look at the wheels now. So, starting from the tender. Everything is in excellent shape. It's another one of those models that doesn't look as if it's had a lot of uh, running time. But I won't complain about that. Uh, everything is there. There is nothing bad to speak about. Shiny wheels, traction tires intact, no screw missing. Yes, everything seems to be in order. Well, 
I don't think I did particularly badly on this model as well. Quite happy about my purchase. Now to the big question. Are there any matching coaches for this locomotive in the catalogues of the period? I mentioned before that Merklin had a bad habit of not producing anything matching when they released new locomotives. That happened extremely frequently. But in this case, oddly enough, in 1987, some Württemberg coaches appeared in the catalogue, although there was no loco to pull them. There was the 4210 as well as the 4211. And there was a luggage car, the 4212. Really bizarre. Something must have been in the works, because as mentioned before, there was no matching locomotives in the program. And if this wasn't bizarre enough, in 1988, in time for the release of the locomotive, we've got two additional Württemberg cars in the form of the coaches 4213 and 4214. Bizarre, bizarre. Joking aside, I am sure Merklin has improved just a bit since then, but it's always nice to have something to run, and I happen to have all those coaches in the collection, and I am sure they will look very nice when I run them together with this beautiful 3511 during an upcoming running session. Well, we've reached the end. Thank you uh, very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much also to the uh, few among you who have subscribed to the channel. It's uh, always rewarding to see that people are showing some interest uh, and it keeps me going. Thanks very much. But for now, bye and uh, until next time.